My beloved brethren and sisters, on this glorious occasion, as we have gathered here together, I wish to give thanks to our Father in heaven for the gift of his blessings to us. I found tears in my eyes while Brother Tuttle was bearing his testimony. And I'd like to say to you, Ted, that I'm inviting this entire audience to join in fasting and prayer on your behalf. I believe in prayer. I know it's a power. And so we join with you in the prayers that I know you and your family have expressed many times. We wanted to join you in your faith and prayers tonight. My beloved brethren and sisters, I love both the Old and the New Testaments of our Bible as a source of great truth. It teaches us about the life and ministry of the Master. From its pages, we learn of the hand of God in directing the affairs of his people from the beginning of the Earth's history. It would be difficult to estimate the impact the Bible has had on the history of the world. Its pages have blessed the lives of generations. But as generation followed generation, no additional scripture came forth to the children of men. Without additional revelation to guide them men began to interpret the Bible differently. Numerous churches and creeds developed, each using the Bible as their authoritative source. But this is no way, but this in no way lessens the worth of the Bible, that sacred and holy book has been of inestimable worth to the children of men. In fact, it was a passage from the Bible that inspired the prophet Joseph Smith to go to a grove of trees near his home and kneel in prayer. I know I was there recently. What followed was the glorious vision which commenced the restoration of the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ on earth. That vision also began the process of bringing forth new scripture to stand shoulder to shoulder with the Bible in bearing witness to a wicked world that Jesus is the Christ and that God lives and loves his children and is still intimately involved in their salvation and exaltation. Through the prophet Nephi, the Lord warned against those 
who might say that the Bible was all the scripture the world would need. He said, know ye not that there are more nations than one? Know ye not that I, the Lord your God, have created all men, and I bring forth my word unto the children of men, yea, even upon all nations of the earth. Know ye not that the testimony of two nations is a witness unto you that I am God, that I remember one nation like unto another, and I do this that I may prove unto many that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever." Unquote. Today we have three new books of Scripture. The Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I love all of these sacred volumes. This afternoon, I would like to speak particularly about the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants. These two great books of Latter-day Scripture are bound together as revelations from Israel's God for the purpose of preparing his people for the second coming of the Lord. As President John Taylor wrote, the bringing forth of these two sacred volumes cost the best blood of the 19th century, namely the lives of the prophet Joseph and his brother Hiram. To the prophet Joseph Smith, the Lord said, this generation shall have my word through you. The Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants are part of the fulfillment of that promise. Together, these two great works of Scripture bring great blessings to this generation. Each of these two books of modern scripture contain a powerful proclamation to the world. The Book of Mormon title page declares its purpose as threefold. To show what great things the Lord has done, to teach both the covenants of the Lord and convince both Jew and Gentile that Jesus is the Christ. Section one of the Doctrine and Covenants is the Lord's preface to the book. The Doctrine and Covenants is the only book, so far as I know, in the world that has a preface written by the Lord. In that preface, he declares to the world that his voice is unto all men, that the coming of the Lord is nigh, and that the truths found in the Doctrine and Covenants will all be fulfilled. Each of these two great Latter-day scriptures bear powerful and eloquent testimonies, witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. Virtually every page of both the Doctrine and Covenants and the Book of Mormon teaches about the Master his great love for his children, 
and his atoning sacrifice and teaches us how to live so that we can return to him and our Heavenly Father. Each of these two great Latter-day books of Scripture contains the knowledge and the power to help us live better lives in a time of great wickedness and evil. Anyone who carefully and prayerfully searches the pages of these books will find comfort, counsel, guidance, and the quiet power to improve their lives. Of the Book of Mormon, President Marion G. Romney has said, and I miss him very much, if our young folks are traditional in the teachings of the Book of Mormon, they will not only be inspired with righteous courage to choose the right by example, they will also be so schooled in the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ that they will know what is right. From almost every page of the book, there will come to them a moving testimony that Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Son of the living God, our Redeemer and Savior. This alone will be a sustaining anchor in every storm. Speaking of the revelations in the Doctrine and Covenants, President Joseph Fielding Smith said, if we will put them into practice, if we will keep the commandments of the Lord, we will know the truth and there shall be no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. There shall be no false doctrines, no teachings of men that lie in wait to deceive. If we will search these revelations, then we will be fortified against errors and we will be made strong." Unquote. Many years before the coming of the Savior to this earth, the prophet Enoch saw the latter days. He observed the great wickedness that would prevail on the earth at this time and foretold the great tribulations that would result in such wickedness. But in the midst of what was otherwise a very gloomy prophecy, the Lord promised, but my people will be preserved. How would he do so? Note that the Lord himself promised he would do to preserve his people. He said, and righteousness will I send down out of heaven, and truth will I send forth out of the earth to bear testimony of mine only begotten and righteousness and truth will cause, will I cause to sweep the earth as with a flood, to gather out mine elect from the four quarters of the earth unto a place which I shall prepare. The Lord promised, therefore, that righteousness, righteousness would come out of heaven and truth out of the earth. We have seen the marvelous fulfillment 
of that prophecy in our generation. The Book of Mormon has come forth out of the earth, filled with truth, serving as the very keystone of our religion. God has also sent down righteousness from heaven. The Father himself appeared with his son to the prophet Joseph Smith. The angel Moroni, John the Baptist, Peter and James, and numerous other angels were directed by heaven to restore the necessary power to the kingdom. Further, the prophet Joseph Smith received revelation after revelation from the heavens during those first critical years of the church's growth. These revelations have been preserved for us in the Doctrine and Covenants. These two great works of Scripture then became a major tool in the Lord's stand for preserving his people in the latter days. The Book of Mormon, written under the hand of inspiration for our day, preserved through the centuries to come forth in our time, translated by the gift and power of God, it is the keystone of our religion. It is the keystone of our doctrine. It is the keystone of our testimony. It is a keystone in witness, in witness of Jesus Christ. It is a keystone in helping us avoid the deceptions of the evil one in these latter days. Satan rages in the hearts of men and has power over all his dominions. But the Book of Mormon has greater power, power to reveal false doctrines, power to help us overcome temptations, power to help us keep closer to God than any other book. The Book of Mormon must be re-enthroned in the minds and hearts of our people. We must honor it by reading it, by studying it, by taking its precepts into our lives and transforming them into the lives required of the true followers of Christ. Speaking of the central role of the Book of Mormon, in our worship, President Joseph Fielding Smith said, it seems to me that any member of this church would never be satisfied until he or she had read the Book of Mormon time and time again and thoroughly considered it so that he or she could bear witness that it is in very deed a record with the inspiration of the Almighty upon it, and that its history is true. Quote, no member of this church can stand approved in the presence of God who has not seriously and carefully read the Book of Mormon. Likewise, the Doctrine and Covenants becomes an essential part of our spiritual life. The Prophet Joseph Smith said, quote, in these infant days of the church, there was great anxiety to obtain the word of the Lord upon every subject 
and that in any way concerned our salvation. Unquote. Thus, the Doctrine and Covenants is a glorious book of Scripture given directly to our generation. It contains the will of the Lord for us in these last days that precede the second coming of the Christ. It contains many truths and doctrines not fully revealed in our scripture. Like the Book of Mormon, it will strengthen those who carefully and prayerfully study from its pages. Do we as saints of the Most High God treasure the word he has preserved for us at so great a cost? Are we using these books of Latter-day Revelation to bless our lives and resist the powers of the evil one? This is the purpose for which they were given. How can we not stand condemned before the Lord if we treat them lightly by letting them do no more than gather dust on our shelves. My beloved brothers and sisters, I bear my solemn witness that these books contain the mind and the will of the Lord for us in these days of trial and tribulation. They stand with the Bible to give witness of the Lord and his work. These books contain the voice of the Lord to us in these latter days. May we turn to them with full purpose of heart and use them in the way the Lord wishes them to be used, I pray, as I leave my blessing on all of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.